Hey, what's going on guys? It's Bunkify here for MMOBomb.com and welcome to our first impressions of Hero of the Obelisk, a new dungeon-based MMORPG that's being published by GBE Games. Now I'm going to spend about 15-20 minutes or so checking out the game, making my usual commentary. If you guys want to learn more about the game, I highly suggest you check down below at MMOBomb.com for the full game profile. So, Hero of the Obelisk was originally released a few years ago in Korea as Dungeon Hero. And, like I said before, is now being ported over by GBE Games to be published in English-speaking areas. Now, the game it has a sort of anime slash chibi style art style to it, but I have to say, comparatively to other chibi anime style uh, MMOs, the game it offers pretty crisp graphics for that art style, so I do have to give it kudos to that. There are three classes for you to choose from, each with two special job specializations that you can uh, go into at later levels. Uh, starting out with, we have the Swordsman, which is your typical melee DPS, which also can be a tank. Uh, you have the Adventure, which is your ranged DPS. They can opt to be uh, hunters or tacticians eventually, tacticians getting like turrets and other utility-based skills. And then finally, the Scholar, which as you might guess, uh, can become a sorcerer, magical range GPS, or a cleric, which is your healing class. In terms of customization cosmetically, um, of course you can choose between male and female, no sort of character, class, uh, racial, uh, sex, whatever you want to call it, nothing like that in terms of restrictions. Uh, but you do get to choose from different face and hair styles as well as the colors of the, the skin tones and the hair itself. Unfortunately, when it says face, you really don't get that too many options. You can change basically the style of eyes along with a little bit of the mouth. Uh, but it's basically what you would expect with most to be anime style MMOs. Uh, not a lot of character custom customization overall. Um, in game, of course, you have access to a lot of costumes and stuff like that that can change what your character looks like. Um, that's why my previous character looked like a little, you know, tiny chicken. Uh, but overall, you're not going to see too much of it here. Now, going back, I'm just going to hit back here. We'll go ahead and jump into the character that I've already gone ahead and gone through the boring tutorial, what have you. My little Seraphio here, which is, of course, the range class. We'll go ahead the adventurer. Let's go ahead and start the game here. I almost try to click on it uh, to jump in. Now, like I mentioned before, this is a dungeon-based MMO, so a lot of what you're going to be doing uh, will happen in these instance dungeons that you can do with other players or by yourself at different difficulty levels. That being said, there are open areas in the game where you can openly PK with other players or just compete against, you know, large sort of really dangerous mobs uh, as groups, etc. like that. So it's not all dungeon based, although it is a primary, I mean, the game was dungeon hero a bit, you know, at one point. So you can imagine that dungeoning is a, a large portion of the gameplay. Now, if I bring open the map by hitting M here, you'll notice this is sort of the main town that you start in, Trinzel. Uh, on the map, you can see all the different sort of uh, mailboxes and the quest givers, etc. One of the main features that I find really nice is that if I say click on one of these things right here, it automatically will take me to it without me sort of clicking on on the map, if you will, you know, clicking to move to there. I can just sort of click on an individualistic area or icon for it to take me directly to that. Some people don't like that. Some people don't like auto pathing. Uh, but I feel like in MMOs like this where your main, you know, gameplay is going to be centered around just going in those dungeons, um, it just helps to sort of quickly get rid of some of the mundane moving around and back and forth. Alright, so did you defeat the Black Wings? I did. That's something I did previously. Not enough item slots. Alright, so here's one of the first sort of complaints I do have with the game. You notice here I am completely filled with items. I am level 3. I got most of these items through just pickups in the actual dungeons themselves, uh, but also the usual cash boxes uh, or gift boxes, if you will, that you get, you know, from MMOs like this when you first start. They give you a bunch of potions, and maybe some cosmetic items like the chicken suit, which I'm wearing. I guess the, the cheap, cheap suit, because not quite a full-grown chicken. So I will need to get rid of some of these items. Luckily for me, a lot of these items I cannot wear, and they drop fairly often, so I don't really have to worry about getting rid of them, although I can sell them. And I'm going to complete that, and mm, I, I didn't level up the guy next to me leveled up. What a false sense of hope. Alright, so let's go ahead and hit I. We can go ahead and put on our brand new spanking belt there. Alright, so you can't really tell because I am wearing a cosmetic item, but if I brought up in my character here, uh, I should be able to just simply say, hey, I want to take those off, so you can get an idea of what my character looks without those awesome little items. Of course, those don't really affect your stats or anything like that. They're mostly cosmetic here, but you can get a general overview of all of your character's stats, their attack damage, etc., just by looking down here with even more detailed information by hitting detail. All right, so in this hub here, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on over to here, this warrior class master area. 
appears I have a class or a, a quest rather to turn in so we're gonna jump up here as we go now in terms of like movement uh, you can click to move you can use WASD to move in fact in the dungeons I primarily use that um, but unfortunately you can't turn off the click movement as I've seen so far which means you'll often try to click on something and then you'll end up just moving because you're like trying to click on this guy and be like okay I want to talk on talk to you but I can't actually reach you I would have liked to have seen like E to talk or F to talk to someone, especially if you're going to be using the keyboard a lot to move around and use your skills. But it looks like I can finally choose what items I want. Um, I'm going to go with, say, just complete. Not enough item slots. Stop you with the item. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. Go ahead and get rid of this. I guess I'll put my chicken suit back on since it apparently takes up item slots. You do get two other uh, tabs here, one for the gift boxes that you get and one for quest items. So luckily, quest items do not take up the space. Uh, but the only way to get additional lines here is by using a personal inventory line increase item, which, beyond the name being a very tedious name and not really interesting, makes it sound like it's probably something you're going to get in the cash shop, or at least not until you know later on as a quest reward, which is a little bit disappointing, honestly, uh, because you get items so frequently. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, choose some new quest here. Looks like we got to kill the Krugers. They've been running amok, if they will. And let's see if I can accept this. This is going to have to kill a bunch of Krogers, it looks like. We have a lot of sort of hate for the Krogers in this area, it seems. And I cannot use this item until level 4, unfortunately. Two items I cannot use to level 4. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw these out here if you if I so choose. Alright, so i got two new items. Can't use either of them to level 4, which is alright. Now, in order for me to go to the questing areas, all I have to do is click on one of these dungeon entrances. Unfortunately, what I find is that because of the fact that you have to click on everything to activate it, like even the dungeon entrances, you have to click on it to go through, I can't just run through. Uh, what I find is that it's a, ne a necessary amount of clicking, and it brings open just too many dialogue boxes for you to click, and you know, it, it kind of clutters up the screen. I would have liked for just an easy E or F button, or even just running through you know dungeon portals in order for you to go. So this is the area where you select which sort of instance area to begin with. Like I said before, the game has made mention to open PK areas, open world areas with mobs and stuff. So being in dungeons isn't going to be the only part of it, but it is sort of a main part of it. All right, so I'm gonna go here. Queer, quiet. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Queer here, queer heels. I can join a party if I so choose. You can even see the current ranking who's done it the quickest, and I'm just gonna enter it though. Uh, as my solo self here and see what is up now in terms of the difficulty obviously there are different sort of instances or tiers of difficulty to start with everybody starts at the primary tier and this is one of the first things I want to bring out is the fact that the game doesn't look too bad I mean it's not aesthetically just like terrible it's just not necessarily something uh, that is for everybody if you will monsters themselves I can kill baby armadillos which why am I killing baby armadillos come on they're, that, they're armadillos they're so cute but I can also kill newbie bat caves here. Throw down an A skill which blows up all of them with grenades. Never cannot have too many grenades there. And then my three skill here is like an AoE sort of like kick around me. Now, they they tout the combat as action-based combat. Is that guy throwing twigs at me? Or air they look like arrows, but they're like twigs. It, it's tout as action-based combat, but in reality, guys, it's 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 tap targeting, you know? You get a lot of AoE based skills, so you can always deal with these guys pretty effectively in AoE. Uh, but your skills are primarily, you know, you tab between the two of them, and uh, your character will walk up in order to get in range in order to use certain skills. Oh, I'm gonna die. Let's go ahead and use a potion. Potions are very strong in the game. Uh, as you notice, I'm back up to full HP just by using one of them, and I have 68 of them. So at least early on, with all the rewards that you get from like the cash shop, uh, not, I keep saying the gift boxes, uh, you will find that you shouldn't run out of HP or mana uh, easily at all. You notice here I can actually destroy some of these boxes, which is pretty cool. You get up to these higher areas here in order for you to, I think, I, yeah, I ended up hitting that guy on the ground. Uh, in order to get to these awesome little treasure boxes, in order uh, to pick those up for rewards, you can also mine or harvest things like these mushrooms or the crystals themselves to get uh, items for you to use in the crafting. You can craft things like weapons and uh, different types of armor and alchemy, you know, potions, etc. Much like you could in any other MMOs using professions. Uh, they're called elite skills uh, later on in the game. You don't access those, I believe, until starting at level 10. All right, here. So just gonna quickly clear these guys out. No problem here. 
Academy Spellbook. I'd like to pick that up because I don't know what that is. All right, so what is the Academy Spellbook? All right, it looks like this is something again for the Scholar. Unfortunately, everything's for Scholar. I've noticed I've gotten more items for Scholars and for other classes than I have myself. Of course, qu class rewards are also given, you know, through quest rewards, etc. All right, so let's go ahead and kill this thing here. Now, it does do a good job of telling you when you need to kill a, a certain particular type of monster uh, for a quest. So it'll have quests indicated above it. So if you're going for like a, a time challenge, you can quickly just bypass the ones that you don't need. Although, honestly, I just sort of group them all up together here. Let's see how well this will work, guys. We're gonna we're gonna just group these up right here. Come on, we'll make this a little challenging, guys. All right, so come over here. Okay, come on, come on. All right, knock those back. All right, throw the grenade down. There we go. Look at it, so easy. Just kill everything, no problem. Now, what is cool? Again, it's all about the cleave. Even your auto attacks, which is one, you can either hit one once. In order for you to continuously auto attack or you can just mash it. Uh, they will cleave as well if there are nearby enemies. So you can hit multiple characters if they're close enough, which is nice. But again, I mean, sort of boring in 2013, late 2013, just to be tab targeting through everything. Especially for instance based dungeons like this game, games like this. I can understand that, you know, people aren't always in it for the, the combat so much. Uh, but I feel like when you have instance-based combat like this, you have a lot more freedom to do crazy things. And I think it's a good opportunity to, for developers to do so uh, without, you know, basically without having, you know, resorting to gameplay like this. No matter how cute your game is, if the gameplay is a little bit substandard, um, you're going to have a hard time keeping players interested. Because imagine if I have to hit one or just use these skills. I mean, I've, I had the same four skills for... Three levels now and it's good the fact that it actually gives you multiple skills to work with at the get-go instead of just say hey you've got one skill along with your auto attack for the first four levels of the game uh, but you know it just it gets a little tedious you got a lot you got a lot of mobs here a lot of this low level mobs that you have to tediously you know, kill one at a time or an AOE group so all right so let's go ahead and go to this layer again I wish I could just run through it but I got to double click in order to progress and usually this is to progress to the boss room as you notice it said boss room uh, where, you know, the boss himself will have several telegraphed attacks. In this case, it is a giant bird. So I'm going to automatically pop a potion here. And honestly, I don't really have to do anything. I haven't had to do anything really at first. There is some noticeable lag I've noticed. Oh, God. Let's uh, kill these little guys first because these other ones are, are hurting me pretty hard. Right. And again, I'm, I'm back up to full health pretty much instantaneously. All right. So now it's just me and this guy. So at this point, I can honestly just use a, 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 whoa, the tree is like freaking me out. All right, I can just use my normal skills here and don't have to really worry about anything. Any attacks you do, even the telegraphed attacks, honestly, don't do too much damage. I and mean, then again, this is the easiest, you know, dungeon or the easiest level of the dungeon rather. So I would assume if you play this with a group or uh, at any higher difficulty, these would not uh, be so simple. But I like there to be challenged even in the earlier parts of the game. You know, no one wants to just sit here and spam abilities, you know, and not have to worry about mechanics or anything like that. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. These guys seem to have an enormously amount, a large amount of HP, given the fact of their level and the difficulty of how much damage they actually do, which is not very much. It kind of just seems like a, a long, tedious fight, you know, just to whatever. Mission failed! How did I kill 10 of all monsters? I. Okay, apparently I failed one of the missions. I thought I killed everything in the room, but I got some legendary armor. Holy crap! So nice. I am definitely going to receive that. No more slots will screw you. Let's go ahead and get rid of one of these items that I do not need. I'm going to keep that belt here. It looks pretty nice. Um, I still can't use any of this stuff because I'm not level 4 yet, unfortunately. Let's get rid of those nasty little scholar hands. Pick up my legendary watchman armor there and close that out in order to exit the dungeon. So once you're done, you know, you can choose to pick up all this stuff here if you have the room for it. But otherwise... You just finish the dungeon, you exit. No option to restart the dungeon, unfortunately, from inside. One thing I also mention is that this area here, I've already seen it twice for uh, bosses or mobs, if you will, in two separate areas. 
So you may start to see a little bit of repetition in terms of where you're fighting your enemies. Now once I've returned here, I again can just sort of choose to turn in my quest if you will. If I hit K, which brings up your skills, you can see all your different skills here. It looks like I have a, another skill that is unlocked at level 8. I am nowhere near that unfortunately, which is the dash skill. Expert skills. This is what I talk about localization. You can't actually read the entire thing. Located where? I don't know. But these expert skills essentially are things like uh, being able to craft uh, jewelry, uh, craft potions, items like weapons and armor, etc. Basically like your standard professional skills. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn this in here. Quest. And I will complete that for some awesome leather gloves, which I don't have room for. Um, God, there's so many items. I just... I just get so much trash all the time. Alright, and I leveled up so I can use my awesome gloves already. Alright, so let's go ahead and just add all these items in here. Looks like I can opt to use a rifle or two... Hmm, which one is a better deal? It's a pretty good rifle. Alright, let's just go ahead and with the rifle then. We'll see how that works out. And I also can use my awesome legendary... Yes, I want to equip my legendary. All right, so how does the legendary actually look? We'll let's take a look. Maybe it has a different sort of aesthetic style to it. No, because they have to take off. See, why can't they just let us toggle this on and off? Why does it have to put it back in our inventory? That myself, that I have to say is uh, incredibly annoying. I want to, yeah, sure, I'll be titled a newbie. All right, so there is my, there's what it looks like, as you can see. Not too bad, very colorful, and I like the fact that you can get that an epic item at such an early level at a fairly sort of, frequent rate it seems like it didn't really take that long for me to get an epic item at all but anyways let's go ahead and complete this other quest which I turned in looks like I got some rocks that this guy wanted he got some gave me some uh, potions for that and let's see here except looks for raisin I gotta look for a raisin guys or a guy named raisin rather all right so he is the warrior class master here no problem. I want to find my other class master, which happens to be for my particular class. That is the hunter class master. Well, well, let's just assume that he does all classes related to the hunter, including what I am, the adventurer. Because if not, then that would suck. All right. Do you have anything for me? Skill books, level two, splinter. I would like to purchase it. Yes. So I purchased that. I can also sell all these items that I don't want, including a silver bar for a thousand gold. Yes. And if I so choose to, I can also kill these very fast little fortune pigs, which drop gold, which I think is awesome. Just tons of gold here. Look at all the gold they drop. And I can pick up just tons of it. Now I don't know if this is if this is something that's sort of like a, an event, if you will. Uh, for the beta, just ever giving everybody as much gold as possible. Uh, but I do think it's pretty funny, the fact that I kill pigs, and they drop tons of gold, and I run after them and pick up this gold. And that's a lot of gold, too. He even dropped the silver bar, which was worth a thousand. Alright, so that guy didn't have anything for me. These are all fighter class masters, technician class masters. Where is my class master, though? I want to find just my normal class master. Hunter class master. These guys don't have anything. Alright, so let's, let's go over to the fighter, then. See what he has to offer me. Fish Trader. I don't need your fish. Mailbox, dungeon, classic. There is also PvP in the game. I mentioned before that there's open PK, but there's also 4-on-4 four four or 2-on-2 two that you could do with individual play, uh, people that are instants. And then besides that, you can also do guild versus guild battle once a week, uh, which involves you assaulting a, a siege, or sieging rather, a castle, and the other guild defending against it. And you have siege weaponry, etc., like cannons or that you can use to sort of break down the walls. All right, so let's go ahead and complete this quest here. I'm looking for you. I am I found you. Let me complete the quest. There we go. A little bit of lag is to be expected in something like a beta. What this is. All right, here. And again, most of the quests just involve you going back to certain dungeons, picking up items, or killing certain quest uh, objective. Uh, oh, looks like I'm lagging out there a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and just exit that. That's something I've noticed. If, I, if I'm actually in a menu with these guys, I can't really move away from them. If I try to move away from them, uh, they'll just sort of like rubber band me back, unfortunately. So I, I would rather just be able to quickly jump away and you know, continue on with my life, essentially. All right, so I've gone ahead then and picked up all the relevant classes. So what I'll do is I will do one more dungeon here. I can actually go to this dungeon entrance right over there. Just to sort of show off a different area, what you can expect from a variety of dungeons. And then we'll probably wrap it up there for now. 
If I go down here to passive skills, you'll notice I can't even show passive skills, which is basically like the skill tree you would expect in most MMOs. You unlock that at level 10, uh, and that will allow you to sort of customize your character how you see fit. All right, so there's the mine shaft, which is level four. I will go ahead and go there. And I can click join party, which is pretty cool. Let's see exactly how the party system works. You can, of course, choose to uh, invite your friends, even have a friends list, list, if you will. Hey, hero comes. All right, so it looks like I'm with Af here. Here, hey Af here, how's it going? Are you there, Af here? Don't mind me. I'm just turning into a ball. Af, hey, hey, you there? Apparently, this guy's been here for at least two minutes, not doing anything. All right, well, let's go ahead and leave that dungeon then. I don't want to make it too difficult on myself, adding in an extra person who is only going to slow me down. So luckily, I can just jump out of here really quickly. And I would like to leave this group. How to remove from party. I'll remove myself from the party. I am a Debbie Downer. I don't want to be in any kind of parties. All right. So let's go ahead and just enter this alone then and see how we do. This one, like unlike the previous one, is actually inside a, uh, a mine. So a little bit of a, a different sort of layout, if you will. Looks pretty nice. All right, how do I start? Eliminate 93 monsters. 93, that doesn't seem tedious at all. All right, well, let's just go ahead and group these up here since I gotta kill a bunch of them. Come on, let's just group all you up here. This kind of reminds me a little bit of Area Games Eden Eternal where you would basically run through the entire level, group everything up and then kill it at once. Go ahead and use a potion there. Drop another one of those. Hopefully that kills most of these guys. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah, I use that skill there. Let's keep killing. Keep, keep. Ah, gotta watch out. It's a little bit hard to sort of aim everything, especially your, like your your skill that knocks them back, uh, because it automatically seems to to start wherever your mouse is instead of in the middle of the screen, which is what I would expect or what I would like rather. All right, so kill this guy. I've got all these arrows sticking out of me. Thankfully, well, that is a ton, that is a giant arrow sticking out of my back. How am I even standing up? I don't even know. All right, so go and throw those things there. My third skill appears to be my strongest skill, so let's go ahead and make sure I keep that up. Lots of potions here, but honestly, I feel really bad because I can't. I don't want to take those items because my inventory is already crowded enough. And as a new player, you're not going to really know what items to keep, like what items are relevant to you and what items you should discard all the time. So it really makes it difficult for players to sort of immediately determine what's of value. Um, I haven't really seen too much if there is a bank for you to quickly put items in, but it hasn't actually displayed any banks uh, to players yet through the tutorial and just the basic quest. So I would say if you were going just by a normal leveling experience, uh, you're gonna find that you're running out of backspace pretty quickly. All right, so I'll go put those guys over there That being said of course because it's anime chibi everything here is cute as can be All right, let's go ahead and Use my potions there Kill that guy So I see security shield I don't need that because I am NOT any type of warrior or knight Use that here drop this down this should kill everybody Easy peasy. All right, let's kill that guy over here. Is there some charm in the game? Yeah, there's no, no, there'll be some charm. You'll have some times where the characters will emo or talk to each other, especially uh, any of the, the sort of characters you meet along the way that are part of the main storyline. Uh, but overall, I mean, the experience itself is just not something that is entirely like fun. It's, it's very tedious, if you want. In a game like this, especially a game that requires you to tab target through everything. Tedium is not what you want. I feel it's just sort of like the, the difference again between the markets, you know, the, the Western market has a very distinct idea of what is fun and what they enjoy a lot of gameplay of versus the Eastern market who was like, hey, we, we really, really do not like tab target anymore. It's not really our, our thing. Specifically also like dungeon based gameplay like this. All right. So I have to eliminate 31 more monsters. I do like the fact that it actually keeps that track for you. So you're not like, how many am I until I, you know, I actually finish this up. All right, so let's see how quickly I can actually kill these guys. It's gonna kill a lot of them real quickly. I missed them all apparently. All right, let's go ahead and keep running away. It's really hard to kite because of the fact that when you click, you just move around. So you can, you can get pretty hard to actually like make sure you're in the right position here. 
Alright, kill all those guys again. Kill these guys here. Sorry, mine Namumu. What a name of mine Namumu. It looks like I need to eliminate 13 monsters still. Looks like there's some up here. Hopefully, I don't have to backtrack too much. This looks like some kind of weird Disney World like roller coaster. Although, I don't know what's going on here where that used to lead. Apparently, now it leads to a, a dead end into a wall. Always nice. Mind me never to get on any of those. Alright. So, at this point, I need seven more. So, there's three here. Easy enough to get rid of these three. I never have a huge fan of a MMO that requires you to kill 90 of anything. Even if it is super easy to kill it. Look, I have four more monsters to kill here that apparently I've not seen somewhere. So I gotta backtrack through here. And then another thing I have to mention is that when I rotate the camera, it actually will, if I rotate, it'll rotate where which direction I'm headed. So it can be really hard to look around corners and stuff like that. You have to use the WASD to sort of compensate for that. All right, so there are four more monsters. I'm assuming all those monsters are actually in the uh, boss area. So now that I've cleared all this out, I'll go ahead and make my way there to Red Fang's Lair. It's pretty formulaic, if you will. You know, you complete the area before uh, the actual boss, and then you go to the boss. Again, we are only level 4. We don't know how much these actually change up at higher levels. And it doesn't seem like the game really starts to get diversified until at least level 10, when you can start choosing, you know, your special skills and putting in points into your particular talent trees, and then beyond that, going into the different professions, you know, choosing to go for a knight or a, uh, or a cleric or what have you, depending. Apparently, Red Fang is a red rat. Who would have thought with the name Red Fang, he actually would have been red? All right. We got a little lag there, just for a second. All right, so first things first, just going to take these guys out here in the back. Always want to take out the back guys. They had unnecessary DPS for no reason. And I don't want to spend any skills on him or anything like that. Just kind of focus this guy. And again, pretty like formulaic. Yeah, I, I stand in one spot. He does occasionally a cleave or some kind of weird attack. And then I just stick here and use my potions. People would argue, oh, oh, you're gonna back kick me like that. What does that do? Duration, you will take damage over time. Oh, man. All right, well, that's fine. I guess I just use these potions, which go off cooldown in every six seconds. If they wanted to make it more challenging, they should either make them do more, you know, attack more often with their special skills, or, you know, increase the amount of time in between your actual pots, because six seconds is with the actual heal over time that it comes from them is plenty of time to get back up to full health and then to go through this whole rigmarole yet again and not really have an issue killing him but hey i'm level five yippee look at me mission failed i don't understand where those five other monsters are i don't understand i don't it says killed five of all monsters i killed everything on the screen i guess somehow i still failed it all right well what am i gonna get Superior Watchman hat. I will take that. Receive that item here. No more slots, of course, as usual. I'm going to put that on there. No, throw this one away. All right. I have been distributed my dungeon items. Exit this. Yes, I will leave the dungeon as well. We'll throw that cap on, and then we'll probably call this first look finished. All righty, guys. So let me throw on my cap here. And I'll take off my little chicken head, just so you guys can see that before we end it here. Alright there, so not too bad looking for level 4, I'd have to say. You do get pretty awesome looking gear at a fairly early level and rate. Down here though, we can see that even despite the fact that I've leveled up, there's even a fatigue system whereby you cannot, you know, continuously play in one day without probably purchasing eventually. That being said, the fatigue is only at 92%. And I've done probably at least an hour and a half worth of gameplay overall now. Or at least an hour, I'd say. An hour of, like, really hardcore gameplay. So the fatigue system does take a while for you to run out. And if you're playing more than 14 hours a day, maybe you should just go do something else at that point. That being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this first look for now. That's pretty much been all the major systems that I have to show you. Again, a lot of it comes out at level 10. We can earn specialization skills as well as do your passive skills. On the right hand side, you notice we have the cash shop, the friends list, gift box, options, and menus. 
options you don't get very many options you can turn up and down the audio you don't even get really a chance to change the graphical settings other than the resolution and whether or not it's windowed so if you have a lower end pc and you find that this game may be struggling for you you don't really get too many options for making that any better uh, but that's going to go ahead and be my first impressions here of hero of the obelisk if you guys want to know more like i said before check down below at mmobomb.com for the full game profile until next time guys it's been smunkify smunkify out later guys I want to cheer. That's not cheering. That's dancing. There we go. Later, guys.